there's not a person on my team in 16 years that has consistently beat me to the ball every play. That ain't got nothing to do with talent. That's just got everything to do with effort. Nothing else. 15 straight years. 12 Pro Bowls later. If you want numbers. I done saw all of it. And the only thing that's kept me around is my effort. So when you put on this, all I ever knew, because I wasn't a number one recruit, I wasn't a number one linebacker, I wasn't even an immediate guy. All I ever knew was effort will get me seen on tape. Effort will get me noticed to get to the league. Effort would one day take care of my mom and my kids. Effort, which is between you and you. Nobody else can give you effort. Effort is with inside, man. And I'm still grinding because the next kid is talking about he getting too old. Keep watching me if I am. Nobody ain't got to convince me of what I do. I do what I do because I do what I do because I'm built from something. And man didn't create it. Every one of you men in here have that opportunity, man. But ask yourself the question personally. How much time you really wasting? Or do you really represent this? I represent it because it's all I had. It's on the brotherhood I ever been formed to. That's why when I see y'all perform on Saturdays, that is my piece. That's why I run to the hotels. I don't need to talk to nobody before my games. I just need to see what I once came from. I sat in these same chairs you guys sat in, man. I sat around the greatest athletes in the world. And then I found myself totally different because everybody was asking the question, who is this kid? I'm just sharing my story to tell y'all, every time you think somebody got it good, man, they ain't always good. Somebody just, some, some people just make up their mind and they just grind and say the heck with it, man. Because sometimes that's all you can do. How much of our brains are we really going to use? I use mine to tell somebody today, September 11th, when I step on the field against the Pittsburgh Citizens, if that's what God will is, there's no other man out there willing to give up what I'm willing to give up. I said that in 1993, when I said I wanted to be the greatest hurricane, and the only thing that I got in the middle of all of that distance is the only thing that follows work is results. There's no other blueprint. I ain't got no other secrets to tell y'all today. I ain't come here for nothing else but to tell you, if you want to do something, work at it. You want a better relationship with God, work at it. You want to understand why pulling your pants up is important, why yes ma'am and no ma'am is important, why being in the meeting with complete silence when somebody walks in, because it's presence and essence that determines respect. That's all we talking about. The power of respect is never to disrespect. That's why I was the first one sitting down in the meeting. Um, I ain't got nothing to say. Y'all do y'all good. I got to listen. Something out there I need to grab from it. Sitting on the same football field at UM. 1993. And I made a quote. And then some people call it controversy. I call it confidence. I said that I might be the greatest player to ever walk up out of the University of Miami. I did not say that because I thought I was better than everybody else. I said that simply because I was willing to put in the work to now be back here 18 years later and tell you the only brotherhood I still have. You've got to say yes to your life. You've got to say yes. Yes to my dreams. Yes to me. Yes, I can make it. Yes, I can. Doesn't matter how many failures I've made. Doesn't matter how many mistakes I've endured. Doesn't matter about my defeats. Doesn't matter about what I've done. 
sits on my chest in a shirt form. But the eye of that real hurricane is found in my heart. Is this where it all came from? The same path y'all walk. Same calves y'all going in. Same green tree y'all walking up and down. I, mean, I had one pair of jeans in college for at least two years. At least two years. Pain is temporary. It may last for a minute or an hour or a day or even a year. But eventually it will subside and something else will take its place. If I quit, however, it will last forever. Y'all spoiled, some of y'all spoiled, just bottom line. Your parents have done everything for you. You never had to do nothing for yourself, you're spoiled. We're gonna keep it real tonight. Some of you are spoiled brats. Every time you ever got in trouble, somebody in your house got you out of it. Every time you've done something you're not supposed to do, people say, Eric, your mother's a tyrant. You're right. She kicked me out. You're right. She's mean, but she developed a man because she put me out there and said, you're going to have to grow up. And some of you have never learned to grow up. And so every time something get hard, you quit, you call mama. I dare you to take a little pain. I dare you. I dare you not to go home. Somebody said, I got to go home. I feel bad. Go, go through it. You ain't gonna die at the end of pain and success. You're not gonna die because you're feeling a little pain. We have gotten to a point where it's midterms and we're moving forward. The days of you getting money, I'm not saying we quitting, but I'm saying a day has gotta go from external to internal. You have to give it everything you got. No more TV, no more parties, no more playing. If you don't have a 4.0, what you need to be doing is studying. Stop being this high school dropout. Stop giving up, stop sleeping on the streets, stop walking up and down Finkel Avenue like you ain't got nothing and get your GED. Stop being afraid to take a test. I don't care about the fact I'm in a hole now. Doesn't matter about where I am. The last chapter to my life has not been written yet. If you judge me now, you'll judge me prematurely. Stop being afraid to go to college because your daddy didn't go and your mama didn't go. I haven't exposed all my stuff yet. Stop being afraid and be the best Eric Thomas you can be. But listen to me, it's going to be hard. It took me 12 years to get a four-year degree, but I got it. And guess what? On a degree, it don't have dates. So if it took you four and it took me 12, it don't show up nowhere. I'm still in the process of transforming my life. I'm still in the process of becoming. Yes. Yes. Question is, what are you going to do with your time? What drives you? Because I feel home. And when you're home, Ain't much to say. Our work spoke for itself. That's where our swagger came from. Our swagger came from, we worked as a unit. I came to the University of Miami that was one mind, one set, one heartbeat. It was impossible to get to us. Because if you saw us somewhere, you saw 15 or 20 of us. Gotta stop leaving each other. Gotta stop hanging out without each other. The streets ain't chasing the same things you chase. There's many temptations out there. Just stay focused, man. As a team, though. As a team. That's all I knew when I was here. That's what kind of kept me focused. That I finally ran into a team. And you guys have that same thing. Because this you, this you will never die. It'll never die. So it's up to you to carry that. It's up to you to carry that. And every Sunday, every Saturday, everything is talked about. I gotta commit my very being to this thing. I gotta, I gotta breathe it, I gotta eat it, I gotta sleep it. And until you get there, you'll never be successful in life. But once you get there, I guarantee you, the world is yours. You won one yesterday, 
Know what you carry. When you carry this you on your chest. Know what you carry, man. You carry a legacy. A legacy of greatness. And greatness is a lot of small things done well. Day after day, workout after workout, obedience after obedience, day after day. your situation not easy right and it takes time but there's always a way to get from point a to point b and this separates the world into two kinds of people people who look at how things are who accept reality as truth who complain and people who look at what can be who make the most of any situation look at life as if it's clay to be molded to be shaped it seems funny to me, knowing what I do now, that I went through any of my life like a hamster on a wheel. That I talked to people every day who didn't energize me, that I didn't want to be around, that I did things I wasn't passionate about. That is insanity. Because if you don't like something, but you do nothing to change it, what's left for you to do? Complain, whine, stay where you are, that's it. See, one of the reasons I reference athletics so much is because they bring this mentality on you that when things become difficult, when things become challenging, your job, your one job is to find a way to figure it out. And I always did. And I took that and I brought it to everything else I do. And now it's eye-opening to see people achieving success, financial freedom, these things everyone wants and know that the difference between them and everyone else is that they felt like they deserved it. A lot of the time they weren't smarter, stronger, they weren't more gifted starting out, but they moved toward what they wanted. They didn't cry or groan about the problems, they didn't look for sympathy. Those at the top of the mountain are not victims. They would never let themselves be victims. It's about the other side, the opportunity. Getting from where you are to what you want.
I tell you, life is interesting. Life's a journey. You take steps in this direction, you take steps in that direction, and sort of get lost along the way, and sometimes you fall down. But I tell you, there are some times in life where you fall down and you feel like you don't have the strength to get back up. And fear comes in. Maybe you have doubt in your life. Maybe you don't know for sure what's going to be happening in the future and it scares you. Maybe you're, about, maybe you're worried about what people think of you, what people say about you. Just that fear paralyzes you. And I just want to ask you today, do you think you have hope? You know, when you get old in life, things get taken from you. That's part of life. You only learn that when you start losing stuff. There are some things in life that are out of your control that you can't change and you got to live with. The choice that we have though is either to give up or keep on going. I will try 100 times to get up and if I fail 100 times and I give up, do you think that I'm ever going to get up? No. But if I fail, I try again and again and again. For as long as I try, there's always that chance of getting up. And it's not the end until you've given up. We can stay here, get the shit kicked out of us, or we can fight our way back into the light. We can climb out of hell, one inch at a time. You will fail at some point in your life, accept it. You will lose, you will embarrass yourself, you will suck at something. But some failure in life is inevitable. It is impossible to live without failing at something, unless you live so cautiously that you might as well not have lived at all. In which case, you fail by default. Nelson Mandela said, there is no passion to be found playing small and settling for a life that's less than the one you're capable of living. He says, imagine you're on your deathbed and standing around your deathbed are the ghosts, the ghost of the ideas you never acted on, the ghost of the talents you didn't use. They say, we, we came to you because you could have brought us to life. And now we have to go to the grave together. To get something you never had, you have to do something you never did. Nothing in life is worthwhile unless you take risks. If you feel you have something to give, if you feel that your particular talent is worth developing, is worth caring for, then there's nothing you can't achieve. As you start out, to know what you want, to understand why you're doing it, to dedicate every breath in your body to achieve what you feel and what you want to accomplish. So you got to get out there you got to give it everything you got, whether it's your time, your talent, or your treasures. While it may be frightening, it will also be rewarding. Because the chances you take, the faith that you have, that's what's going to define you. What are you going to do with what you have? The inches we need are everywhere. tell you something that every successful person has to do including you believe it or not every successful person in this world has jumped I'm gonna tell you what I mean by that you eventually you are going to have to jump you cannot just exist in this life you have got to try to live if you are waking up thinking that it's got to be more to your life than it is, man, believe that it is. Believe in your heart of hearts that it is. But to get to that life, you're going to have to jump. 
when you become the right person. What I mean by the right person is, once you identify who you are and you begin to separate yourself from the masses, and you begin to see your individuality, when you begin to see your talents, when you begin to see your personal skills, when you were created, you were created with a specific purpose, a specific design. I don't care if you was born and you know your parents didn't claim you, you still special. So I need you to be you. Number one, you gotta catch this. Number one, value, all right? When you become who you are, when you become the person that you were created to be, designed to be who you were designed to be, when you become an individual, what you do is you, 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 you take yourself and you start separating yourself from other people. What you need to do to get to a place in your life where you blow up is one, to become the right person. Because when you become the right person, what you do is you show your worth, you show your value. When you become the right person, when you become the right person, what you do is you start separating yourself from other people. You begin to have a certain uniqueness. As long as you following other people, as long as you being a copycat, you will never ever be the best copycat in the world, but you will be the best you could be. You got to take that gift that's packed away on your back. You got to jump off that cliff and pull that cord. I dare you, number two, to invest in yourself. That's right, I dare you to invest time. I dare you to be alone. I dare you to spend an hour getting to know yourself. If you don't ever use it, you're gonna just go to work. And if you're getting up going to work on a job every day that you hate going to, that ain't living, man. You just existed. At one point in time, you ought to see what living's like. But the only way to see what living's like, you got to jump. And here the problem. Let me tell you something. Your parachute will not open right away. I, I'm sorry. I, I wish I could tell you it did, but it don't. When you jump, it's not going to open right away. You're going to hit them rocks. But eventually, eventually, the parachute has to open. People ask me all the time, they say to me, what is the secret to success? So many young people are getting so much advice from their parents and from the teachers and from everyone. But what is most important is that you have to dig deep down, dig deep down and ask yourselves, who do you want to be? Not what, but who. And I'm talking about not what your parents and teachers want you to be, but you. I'm talking about figuring out for yourselves what makes you happy. No matter how crazy it may sound to the people. I spent a lot of time by myself so I could figure out and listen to what is inside my heart and inside my head. Something burned inside me, I wanted to be different. I was determined to be unique. I was driven to think big and to dream big. I always wanted to be very intense. I always wanted to be number one. I took it very seriously in my career. And so this intensity always paid off for me. This commitment always paid off for me. I didn't want to just be a bodybuilding champion. I wanted to be the best bodybuilder of all times. I didn't want to just be a movie star. I wanted to be a great movie star that's the highest paid movie star and have the buff the title building. I mean, how many times have you heard that you can't do this and you can't do that and it has never been done before? I hear this all the time. I was told to my face. You're, you're nothing but a giant muscle. You can't act. You have no future and you have an accent that is laughable. That just shows you again so much for it can't be done. This is why I try to tell you anything and everything can be done if you can visualize it, if you believe in yourself. You're going to find the naysayers in every turn that you make. Don't listen. Just visualize your goal, know exactly where you want to go. Trust yourself. So pay no attention to the people that say it can't be done. Trust yourself no matter how, what anyone else thinks.
what is the point of being on this earth if all you want to do is be liked by everyone and avoid trouble. We have so many rules in life about everything. The only way that I ever got any place was the breaking some of the rules. It is impossible to be a maverick or a true original if you're too well behaved and not want to break the rules. You have to think outside the box. Now, of course, this journey is not going to be without any setbacks and failures or disappointments. That's just the way life is. Don't be afraid to fail. You can't always win, but don't be afraid of making decisions. You can't be paralyzed by fear of failure, or you will never push yourself. You keep pushing because you believe in yourself and in your vision. And you know that it is the right thing to do. Success will come, so don't be afraid to fail. I always believe leaving no stone unturned. That's what makes you a champion. When you're out there partying, horsing around, someone out there at the same time is working hard. Someone is getting smarter and someone is winning. You never want to fail because you didn't work hard enough. But if you want to win, there's absolutely no way around hard, hard work. No pain, no gain. Whatever path that you take in your lives, you must always find time to give something back. Something back to your community, give something back to your state or to your country. Tear down that mirror. Tear down that mirror that makes you always look at yourself. And you will be able to look beyond that mirror and you will see the millions of people that need your help. Reaching out and helping people will bring you more satisfaction than anything else you've ever done. Trust yourself, break some rules, don't be afraid to fail, ignore the naysayers, work like hell and give something back. Most of us were raised to become ordinary. And I'm not putting down ordinary, but ordinary is just not good enough for me. Ordinary is you go through your life and you fill out the forms and you pay your taxes and you do what your parents tell you and you're honorable and you're honest and you're a good citizen and then you die. Extraordinary is something very, very different. This is about recognizing within yourself that there's something very, very extraordinary that you haven't been trained to believe in, to come to a place where you can apply it and put it into your life. You can go way beyond ordinary. You can go way beyond just being average. There's not an average person watching this show. There's not an average person in this room tonight. All of us are extraordinary. We just have to come to believe it. Ordinary just simply isn't enough. Ordinary is when you want to become average and to fit in. But to get to extraordinary, what you do is you have to consult the invisible place within yourself. And this is called your soul. The ideal of the soul, the thing it asks for is neither knowledge, nor light, nor happiness. The ideal of the soul is space immensity the one thing your soul needs is to be free free to expand and reach out and to embrace the infinite yes the ideal of the soul is infinity it is miserable when it is circumscribed and restricted it is a fragment of the universal soul which is infinite the the need to move beyond just fitting in the need to move past being circumscribed the soul does not like when you get fenced in when it is told what to do when it's told it has limitations when it's told it can't become that and so many of us go through our life with these enormous limitations that we have placed upon ourselves that have been handed to us from the time that we were little boys and little girls. If you would like to accomplish something, you must first expect it of yourself. And my question to you is, 
what do you expect of yourself? Do you expect to be able to perform miracles, to attract into your life the kind of prosperity that you are entitled to? Do you expect that you can manifest the kind of relationships that you would like? In order to be able to have these kinds of expectations for yourself, you have to make a dramatic change, a dramatic shift. You must change what's possible for you and what you believe is possible for you. But the question becomes, who am I? Who you are is that soul that I spoke about a few moments ago. That soul that says, I want to expand. I want to be free. I want to go to a place where I understand that who I am is birthless, deathless, changeless, and live from that place. Because what this involves fundamentally is reprogramming yourself from the belief system that has been your ego. The part of us that has come to believe that who we are is what we have and who we are is what we do and who we are is what other people think of us like our reputation and who we are is separate from each other and so we've been raised and taken out into the world and said go out there and prove who you are by achieving by accumulating by getting other people to like you the direction we take in life is far more important than the place that our ego parks us in this present moment. That who we are is this divine, infinite being that keeps occupying new bodies endlessly until we leave this body and then move on. And there is no beginning, there is no end, there is only now, each and every one of us. So the soul, the part of you that is extraordinary, the part of you that came into this world and knows I can be anything, I can do anything, I can accomplish anything that I place my attention on. Because if you want to accomplish something, you must first just expect it of yourself. And this means changing around the expectations that you've been conditioned to believe are your dharma or are your destiny. The ego is doing this, um, this number on us, but there's also the part of us that is divine, a spark, a spark that is in each and every one of us. And <laughs> this spark, I want you to be able to recognize because that spark, I'd like to see you have it grow from just a tiny little spark, which means you can hardly see it, to a fragment, to a piece, to a larger chunk, if you will, to a section, so that this spark within you is growing and growing and growing until it absolutely becomes even more than you imagined. That we can come to know this place from which we originated, the place to which we return, all of us, by allowing this spark to become something bigger than just an occasional thing where you extend an act of kindness someplace, that it can become your way of being. It's about allowing yourself to recognize you must have this spark because this is what you came from and this is what you return to. And as this spark becomes a fragment and becomes a section and becomes larger and larger, you reach the highest self. And what is the highest self? This is the one that's going to surprise you a bit. The highest self is the self that you haven't been trained to believe in. You've been trained to believe in your ordinary awareness. Your highest self is where you begin to recognize your connection to your source, to the Tao, to the divine. The first expression of every individual everywhere in the universe 
either in spoken word, silent thought or feeling, is I am. Recognizing its own conquering divinity. The student, me, you, all of us, endeavoring to understand and apply these mighty yet simple laws must stand guard more strictly over his thoughts and expression in words or otherwise. For every time you say, I am not, I cannot, I have not, you are, whether knowingly or unknowingly, throttling that great presence within you. If you want to have something show up in your life, the kind of person you would like to become, manifest something new into your life, something powerful, whatever it might be, you obviously must first be able to imagine it, your imagination. This is yours and yours alone. You can place anything into your imagination that you want to place there. Independent of what anybody else says about it, independent of what your senses tell you, independent of all the evidence that may be to the contrary, you can place into your imagination an I am that represents what you would like to attract into your life and make it come into fruition. That imagination is more important than knowledge. Knowledge is limited. Imagination encircles the world. So you never want to place into your imagination any thought that you would not want to materialize. You never want to allow in your imagination to be contaminated by the way life used to be. Your imagination is yours. Don't let any other people influence you. Never allow people's ideas about what is possible or impossible for you to occupy your imagination. You have to be able to call the things which you have not seen yet materialize and manifest into your physical world. You have to be able to say to yourself, I call those things that I would like to become as if they already do and you place into your imagination fearlessly the I am's which you would like to create for yourself therefore to incarnate a new and a greater value of yourself you must assume that you already are what you want to be and then live by faith in this assumption now this flies in the face of so much of what you've been told because you have a tendency to believe that what your eyes and ears tell you is reality. But this is what we know by our senses. Just this little tiny fragment. I can't even get, you know, it's like a, a millionth of a millimeter. And all that is unknown is in the invisible, in the imagination. And most of our attention is focused on this is my beliefs and my disbeliefs about what is possible and what isn't possible are here. And it's an endless, an endless universe. So placing I am's into your imagination is one thing. It's an intellectual act. Living from the end means that you call the things which do not exist as if they did. One of the battles that we all have to fight is the battle with discouragement. Our dreams don't always happen on our timetables. We go through disappointments, adversities, and it's easy to lose our enthusiasm, to lose our zeal for life. And it's good to have family and friends that encourage us. It's good to have a coach, a teacher, a pastor to cheer us on. But one thing I've learned is other people cannot keep us encouraged. Other people can't keep us cheered up. They may give us a boost. They may help us from time to time. But if you're really going to live in victory, that encouragement has to come from the inside. You've got to learn to encourage yourself. When times get tough and things aren't going your way, you don't feel like pursuing your dreams, 
Your mind is telling you it's not worth it. It's never going to get any better. You might as well just settle where you are. Deep down in your spirit, there has to be a resolve. A strength on the inside that says, I refuse to settle where I am. I know God has a great plan for my life, and I'm going to keep pressing forward and become everything that He's created me to be. You have to view everything negative in your life. Every obstacle, every limitation, every sickness, every problem. View it as only temporary. It is not going to last forever. That sickness is just a season. It is not going to keep you from your destiny. You may have had it for 20 years. The doctor's telling you just learn to live with it. But in your mind, you cannot allow it to become permanent. created to be average. You were never created to barely get by. You were created to be above only and never beneath. No matter what you may be facing, no matter how impossible it looks, you need to keep reminding yourself that right now God is in the process of perfecting that which concerns you. Right now God's working behind the scenes in your life, arranging things in your faith. Getting the right people, the right breaks, the right opportunities lined out for you. Draw that line in the sand and say, that's it. This is a new day. I am done living negative, discouraged, no enthusiasm. I know this is the day the Lord has made. I'm going to choose to live this day with faith, with expectancy. Even if it's been 38 years... Even if it looks like it's set in stone, it looks like it's never going to change. It's just impossible. God says, if you believe, all things are possible. In life, every one of us is going to have opportunities to get down and discouraged. My message to us today is we don't have to give in to that temptation. Get up every morning thinking about the goodness of God. Replay the victories that He's given you in the past. Don't remember the negative. Change the channel and remember all the times God's brought you through. If you don't have an encouragement file, start one. And don't wait for others to compliment you. Compliment yourself. Learn to celebrate who God made you to be. Friends, it's up to you to keep yourself encouraged. Some of you have been dependent on your friends, your family. Don't put that pressure on them. You can draw strength from the inside. Another thing that can help us to stay encouraged is we need to create an encouragement file. At home or the office, whenever someone sends you a kind note, someone gives you a compliment, put it in that file. Then when you're tempted to be down, go get those letters out and reread them again. Let those words lift your spirits. Many times after just five or ten minutes of being reminded of how much people loved you, reminded of some of the good things you've done, that'll totally change your attitude. I found you cannot stay down and defeated as long as you're thinking about the goodness of God. Really, the only way that we can keep ourselves encouraged is by thinking these encouraging thoughts. Thoughts of hope, thoughts of faith. You've got to tune in to that voice of victory. There's a scripture I love. It says, God will perfect that which concerns you. If you believe it's permanent, then it's going to become permanent. If you believe it will never get better, then it won't. If you believe you've reached your limits, then you have. The problem is our own thinking. The moment we accept it and allow the stronghold to take root, we've lost the battle.
Some of you have never once said to yourself, I'm a good mother. I'm a good father. I'm talented and creative. I'm kind and considerate. I don't say this arrogantly, but I like who God made me to be. And I love to compliment other people, but I've learned even to compliment myself. get difficult, you cannot take ownership of that problem. Don't embrace the trouble and let it get on the inside. If you do, it'll become a part of you. That's what stops us from God's very best. Every setback is a setup for a comeback. You may have gotten knocked down, but you didn't get knocked out. We get discouraged and we slip over into that negative mentality and we start thinking, my obstacles are too big. I don't see how I could ever change. It's always going to be like this. Then our own wrong thinking is what allows it to become permanent. There's another voice. It's called the voice of victory. And it says, no weapon formed against you is ever going to prosper. You may have gone through a setback, but you need to dig your heels in and get ready for a comeback. God did not bring you this far to leave you where you are. He has you in the palm of His hand. He had the solution before you ever had that problem. He already has a way out. God knows the end from the beginning. Everything you're facing right now is subject to change. That means one touch of God's favor, and it can turn any situation around. If you're not able to compliment yourself, You'll never become everything God's created you to be. You've got to feel good about who you are. I'm not talking about being arrogant, going around thinking that we're better than somebody. I'm talking about learning to accept and approve yourself. And I want you to get in a habit, not of catching yourself doing something wrong, but start catching yourself doing something right. If you've been struggling with something a long time and you're tempted to get discouraged, you need to remind yourself you're not going to be staying there long. That is not your permanent address. You're just passing through. It's a light affliction. It is only for a moment. You cannot be a believer until you see your old life and the misery thereof and want to change it. Are you committed? Because without commitment, nothing happens. If you don't learn to give like you learn to get, 
every area that there is not reciprocity, it will die. Reciprocity. What do you give back for what you get? If you're not committed, you're not going to make it. Even the ones with the personalities you don't like. You have to be committed. Through the storm and the rain and the heartache and the pain and the disappointment, you have to believe in the we and the us and not the me and the you. Or you're not going to make it. It's a commitment. It's not a feeling. Until you have had the taste of finishing, you will not respect yourself. Until you follow through, until something is done, come hell or high water, tears and struggles and pain, and you go through it anyway, and you show up and you continue to fight on, no matter the circumstances, after a while, something begins to wither inside of you. Anytime you need something that you can't give to yourself, you're at the mercy of somebody else, and when they don't come through, you got pain. And what you become is the consequences of what you didn't get. It's an urge, it's an urge, truth be told, every champion has felt it, every president has felt it, every king has felt it, every lion has felt it, every winner has felt it, every soldier has felt it, every victorious person has felt it, the urge to quit. Don't you give up on your dream. I don't care if you don't have the money, you don't have the help, and you don't have the family for it, and you don't have the background for it, and you don't have the friends for it. Don't you give up on your dream. Don't you do it. Don't you do it. Don't you do it. It may take you twice as long. You may have to take courses and classes. You might not read as fast. You might not move as quick. You might not have as much, but don't you quit. Don't you quit. You do make a difference. You do make a difference. You do make a difference. As weak as you are, as tired as you are, as many mistakes as you made, you do make a difference. There is something they would lose if you were not there. There was something that they would miss if you were not there. You do make a difference.